Welcome back. Richard Southern joins us now. Hi, Richard. Hi, Tina. How <laughs> lovely is it today? It's here? a beautiful day and it's lovely here at Queen's Park. Well, the Bank of Canada is looking for input on a potential digital currency. Yeah, this is interesting because, you know, more and more central banks around the world are getting involved in this or thinking about getting involved in it now that, you know, crypto uh, names like Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of a bit more established. Bank of Canada said it's launching an online survey team. It's going to be up until the end of June. They're looking for input on a wide range of designs for any possible crypto it might get involved in. Uh, digital currency from the Bank of Canada would be a little bit different from the likes of uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin in that it would be backed by the central bank and pegged to the Canadian dollar. So its value wouldn't change uh, in the way that, that uh, Bitcoin does. Mm -hmm. Bank of Canada says that while it doesn't see a need for a digital currency right now, it is preparing for the potential ahead. It says digital currencies from the central bank might be necessary uh, if they become more widely uh, accepted and perhaps if people stop using cash in the way they used to. So it's pretty interesting that an authority like the Bank of Canada is thinking about this and asking for our input. Yeah, definitely interesting. Good that they're preparing and ahead of the game. All right, now King Charles has officially been crowned. We all saw it this weekend. Pretty soon he'll be coined too. Yes, uh, Bank of Canada hadn't set up until the weekend if they were going to replace the late queen with the king's picture. Now we know they are. They used Saturday in the coronation to announce this, Tina, uh, that the late queen will be replaced on the Canadian coins and on the $20 bill by King Charles III. And uh, they haven't sort of uh, had the final design of how his face would be depicted, but they did say uh, that he would be facing the left, uh, facing left on the coins. There had been calls uh, for the bank to use someone else, someone like maybe Terry Fox, right? Mm -hmm. And the Bank of Canada says we all are still looking at that option for the five dollar bill. Okay, so a couple options on the go there. All right, and lastly, a new study shows that returning to the office could actually be hazardous to our health. Yeah, found it could make you overweight and even could turn you into a bit of a problem drinker, Tina, going back to the office. Interesting. I don't know about this. I mean, working at home, you kind of close to the kitchen sometimes. I definitely eat more when I work from home. Yeah, 100%. I me was thinking too. about this this week, actually. Taking <laughs> this one with a grain of salt, yeah. but it's researchers at Stockholm University uh, saying that uh, well, they did some research and they found that people who worked more than 40 hours and commuted more than five hours each week were much more likely to be physically inactive and experience sleep problems and therefore were more likely to gain weight if they went back to the office full time. It also found that when a person's workplace was located near a bar, they were more likely to become problem drinkers. The bar part I kind of get. Sure. And this is just going to be fodder for people saying, hey, I don't want Mr. Boss or Madam Boss, I don't want to go back to the office, right? Because a lot of companies are making this decision now about whether to force people back more often. Yeah. Well, I like our hybrid workflow that we've got going on. Let's hope we keep that around. Let's keep it around. Yeah. yeah.